In this video, I'm going to show you uh, one of the applications that uh, that came with my calculator. I'm going to go to I'll uh, turn it on first. Go to my apps button here, and I get a few choices. You may or may not have these on your calculator. Um, I'm going to go to the probability simulation. Version 1.1, copyright 2001, Corey Taylor and Rusty Wagner. I guess those would be the people to contact if you wanted to get a copy of this, or you, maybe you can uh, link up with someone you know who has it on, on their graphing calculator. Press any key. There's a few different options here for simulations. You can toss coins, roll dice, pick marbles, spin a spinner, draw cards, or random numbers. Um, I'm going to start off with, uh, well, let's start off with toss coins. In the upper right hand corner here you're going to see um, basically a histogram that will show you the relative number of times that we get heads and tails. Um, these, uh, this menu down here tells you what the function of these buttons are. So I'm going to go ahead and toss some coin. Uh, I get a heads and you'll see a bar come up heads there. Let me toss it again. Another heads. You see the bar didn't change but um, there's a good reason for that. Let's try it again. Tails, okay. Now, heads have come up twice and tails has come up once, so heads is twice as tall as tails there. Now I can sort of speed up my process here by um, simulating 10 at a time or 50 at a time. I'm going to go ahead and do 50. And it'll tell you what role you're on right up here. And then the relative number of times that um, that heads and tails have come up. Okay, so heads has come up a little bit more than tails, and that's why the bar is higher. Let's do it 50 more times. And you'll know that if you have a fair coin, uh, this graph will, over time, be pretty boring. They should be equal heights over time, because the, uh, the distribution is what they call uniform. The same probability for each outcome. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, escape from that. And now I'm going to go into the set because I want to want to change things up a little bit. Um, let's have two coins instead of just one. And I'll hit OK. Uh, it's OK that uh, the data was lost there. Okay, and now notice what it's plotting. It's going to be plotting the number of times I get zero heads, the number of times I get one head, or the number of times I get two heads. So I'm going to go ahead and toss. Notice two coins will come out. I get a heads and a heads. That's two heads, so we get a bar up there. Let's go ahead and do 50 right away. Let's do 50 more. Now what should you expect? Should you expect a uniform distribution this time? The answer is no, because getting one head is more likely than getting zero or two heads. Um, there's only one way to get zero heads, and that's if you get both tails. There's only one way to get two heads, and that's if you get two heads. However, there's two ways to get one head. You could get a head and a tail, or a tail and a head. So therefore, this bar, over time, should be twice as tall as the other two, and you're starting to see that now. Let's do 50 more. And as the number of rolls gets up there, we're up to almost 200 rolls now, you're not going to see much change here in the histogram. So kind of a neat simulation, and you could do three coins as well. Let's escape out of there. Escape. Uh, yes. And let's go to rolling a dice. And let's see what happens when we roll. We've got uh, a six-sided die, so those are our options here. We got one through six. Let's roll 50 times. See what happens. Now, if this is a fair die, then you should expect a uniform distribution. Again, you should expect over time that these bars should all level off. Now, if you're so inclined, you can also uh, escape out of here, go into set where you can set the number of dies, and you can actually set the number of sides on the die. You can have a 
uh, eight sided dice or ten or twelve or twenty that's kind of interesting um, or if you go into this little sub menu here this advanced menu you can change the weights of each outcome so for example you could make you could make the probability of a one be say oh let's make this uh, really large let's make it like 0.4 and then it changes uh, it changes some of the other weights accordingly because they have to all add up to one eventually. So I'm going to hit OK. And now you would expect that we don't get a uniform distribution. OK. Yep, that's OK. We don't need to save that old information. Let's roll. Remember we set the probability that one will come up as 0.4 and the rest were uh, less than that. Let's roll 50 times and see what happens. And just as we expect, the one comes up uh, a lot more than the others. And it automatically adjusted the the six to be a really small one, so that one isn't even showing yet. So that's kind of interesting. Um, let's escape out of there. Uh, let's go to set, and let's go to set two dice and then hit OK. Uh, yes, that will clear trials. OK. And then let's go to roll. So now notice our our, uh, our graph over here goes from 2 all the way to 12. Ooh, snake eyes we got there. So that's a 2. Let's roll 50 times. I wonder if that weight carried over, I bet it did because this is kind of abnormal to have to have a, a two occur that that often relative to the others. So let's go back to um, let's escape out of here, go to set, and then advanced. Yeah, it still has those probabilities that we put in there. Let's change this to um, one one. Okay, so now it's back to uh, uniform distribution for each die. Okay, let's roll. And let's roll 50 times. You may or may not remember from your stats or probability class that when you're rolling two dies, the sum is not uniform. There's a lot more ways to roll a 7 than there are to roll a 2, for example. For a 7, you could roll a 3 and a 4, a 5 and a 2, 1 and a 6. For a 2, you could only roll a 1 and a 1. So that's why the, the probability is not uniform. And if you keep repeating this experiment, you'll start to see... Uh, a nice pyramid shape here with a lot more frequency happening towards the seven and a lot less frequency happening towards the end here. Let's do one more roll with uh, one more set of 50 rolls. Okay, and I could I could go on further and make that so it's a nice little histogram, but um, I'm going to go ahead and clear out of there. And by the way, every time you do this, you might get a different graph because this is, uh, you know, using random number generator. Um, let's go to, let's skip ahead to, uh, well, let's go to draw cards. Cards are always fun. Okay, um, so we're going to draw a card out of the deck, and what do we get? We get the eight of diamonds. And draw again. Let's see what we get. Eight of hearts. And it'll it'll keep tabs of what you get over here. Ace of clubs. Um, you can have one, two, or three decks. You can replace the card back into the deck, which, you know, that's a very important concept in probability is with or without replacement. And you can also change the size of the deck. So, um, that's that. Hopefully uh, you have this on your calculator and can do some experimentation with it. I'm going to leave you there because I'm at my 10 minute time limit, so 
Uh, we'll see you on the flip side.